Alrighty guys and gals, today I want to just um, do a little kind of a let's talk about sewing machine accessories type of video here. And um, I'm going to talk about this funny contraption here and if you're new to sewing, um, you might buy a sewing machine that has one of these. This is actually one you can see I had it for a while. It's started to turn yellow but it actually came with a brand new machine I bought years ago and I never got rid of it. But anyway, to the point, this is called a walking foot. And when um, my friend Margie gave me the Viking sewing machine, it had all of these extra accessories with it. And I'm pretty sure it had this walking foot. I think it already had it on it. And uh, Margie's been sewing for a long time. She's a little bit older lady. And she told me, you know, the first thing I did when I got it, because it was such a nice machine, she gave me um, all the parts, presser feet and everything with it, is I took this little contraption off because I was unclear um, exactly how to use it. I, I think I kind of knew from my mom and my grandma that it was a quilt, uh, it was used for quilting, but um, I just thought you couldn't use it for anything else. So, um, I, Margie and I were emailing back and forth and she said, well, I always, I think she, it was from, she saw the first video I did with the Viking and I didn't have the um, walking foot on it. And she said, well, I always kept the walking foot on it because it's good for anything and it, it helps to feed the fabric through a lot better. So I did use it for a long time on the um, Viking, but then I would take it off and it was, it's kind of a big tool to get on and off of there. And, um, so when I needed to quickly get a presser foot on and off, I just um, got to where I didn't use it as much. But with my Janome, I wanted to um, use a walking foot because I felt like uh, there's some things, I, projects I plan on doing, and they're going to be a little bit different material. There's something I was working on a while back with some of the faux leather or the vinyl and... Um, I was researching my machine and I figured out that I have a low shank machine and I was like, well, most every machine I've had has been low shank, so let's see if I still have that walking foot. So I did and I took it out and it does fit and it does work on my Janome. And I'll talk to you in a minute about low shank, high shank machines and um, explain that a little bit and, and give you some resources that you can go to look it up. But basically with this... Um, with your sewing machine here, I don't know if you guys can see it, but when you're sewing, there are some little teeth in there that will grab a hold of your fabric and kind of help guide it along as the needle sews. It'll um, Those uh, feed dogs, as they're called, will feed the fabric through the machine. And with some fabrics, it might be a little harder to get them to feed through the machine, you know, like, like the vinyl or thicker... Um, layers of fabric and um, things like batting and, and you know fleece maybe even and what these this walking foot does is it has its own set of feed dogs. I'm going to make sure you can see that but you see those right there and they they work in unison with the feed dogs on your sewing machine so that if you've got a, a tougher fabric that's harder to feed through there, the, you have an extra set of feed dogs here that will help to get that fabric through there. And I'm going to be 100% honest with you. I'm not quite sure what this arm is for. I did some research online, and some people said it was to line up plaids. Um, others said it's just there to help guide that fabric. Okay, so I've already taken off the presser foot and the presser foot attachment, or the the ankle, I think it's called. Um, so now what I want to do, and this, this gets kind of tricky because I did do this earlier today and I was like, well, this just doesn't want to fit. But it does. Um, you take this little piece here that you see hanging down and you're going to put it on that where you screw the needle in. That's kind of needs to rest up there. It keeps it, keeps everything steady and keeps it in place. And then I just like to hold that, put that presser foot down. Now I'm going to take the screw that I, they usually don't come with their own screw. This is the screw that um, had the ankle on for the other piece. So I'm good. You always want to make sure that your thread 
is underneath and behind the presser foot before you start sewing. Y'all remember that sundress that I told you gave me such a hard time the other day? Well, this is a piece of it that messed up. So I'm folding it over, and this is like um, one, six, seven, eight, eight layers of fabric, and this is cotton fabric. Um, nothing unusual, but it's quite a few layers, like maybe if you were making a quilt or something like that. And I'm just going to show you how this thing works. So, Margie was definitely on to something because when you do this, it, it really goes through there smooth. It's no trouble. It's a little loud. It can be a little noisy. Um, I'll just let you hear that real quick in real time so that you can see that it's nothing to be startled by. I think it's just the bulkiness of the piece. But uh, as long as you don't hear any clanging or banging or the needle banging on the presser foot and you've put the screw in there tight, you're good to go. But here's real-time sound. So you see there, that can be pretty loud. But the end result of using this particular foot is you get nice, neat, clean stitches on layers of fabric. If you did this with a regular presser foot, it's, it's not going to feed that fabric through there at the pace that it should, and you're probably going to get skipped stitches or, you know, just a mess. That is a walking foot. And let's just right quick, I want to go over the shank with you. I don't have other examples I can use. I will give you the link to this vlog in the video um, description box because it didn't print out with the pages but I found this really helpful sewing blog from this very nice lady who has printed things out for us and this kind of explains shank and I'll just go over it with you if I can get it in the frame there where you guys can kind of look at it now, low shank is if you measure from the screw hole to the bottom of the pre or yeah, the screw hole to the presser foot bottom is about a half an inch. That's going to be a low shank machine. If the screw hole to the bottom of the presser foot is an inch or more, I don't think it can be more, but if it's an inch, then you've got a high shank. And these, of course, that's that's kind of obvious. This is a slant shank just you you can go on this blog and she has lots of helpful things she even has a list and list and list of machine models and makes and um whether they're low shank or high shank my genome wasn't on there but it's kind of obvious that it's a low shank i mean it's you know that's a screw hole there's the bottom of the presser foot that's not an inch so anyway i hope this video was helpful guys and look for a sewing tutorial on um Tuesday and I will probably be using this little handy dandy little foot right here. So that's it y'all. Peace. Peace. Bye bye.